All but one of the five men who went before a judge here today are charged with assault in the second degree. 508 of 24. Your men, Reverend? One by one, they were brought before a judge, and one by one, they made the same plea. Not guilty. Those were the first two of five different men to appear before a judge. All five had been indicted in relation to the January 27th attack on an NYPD lieutenant and an officer near Times Square. The man in the first case, Yoman Reveron, came to court on his own but left in handcuffs. $150,000 bail, in part because he's also been charged in a separate case of stealing. Next, Yohenry Brito. He was the man seen on NYPD body cam footage being arrested last month in the incident that resulted in the attack. He had been the only one allegedly involved who'd initially been held on bail, $15,000 worth. But it was paid this week by a church that wasn't enough for the judge. Why did the church pay for his bail is my question. <clears throat> and let me ask you guys this question. Who, who else's bail does the church pay for? That's interesting, don't you guys think? A church or just some random church paying for their bail. Why would they do that? Why would the church do that? She ordered Brito detained until a hearing next Tuesday. Kelvin Servita Arocha did not come in on his own. He'd been taken into custody Friday morning by ICE agents. For his assault indictment, the judge gave him $15,000 bail. Wilson Juarez was not accused of attacking the officers directly, but instead with tampering with evidence that might get his fellow defendants in trouble with the law. He'd also been picked up by ICE on Friday. To keep him in city custody and not federal, the judge gave him $1 cash bail. She gave a lot. How many of y'all knew about these bails? This guy got a dollar cash bail. When is the last time you heard of an American getting a dollar cash bail? Now, the thing that's interesting is that these bail reform policies allegedly were created to allegedly deal with uh, uh, disparities in ability to be able to pay bail, basically based on the black, white racial wealth gap. And look at the bails that they're charging these migrants who beat up their own police force. into custody Friday morning by ICE agents. For his assault indictment, the judge gave him $15,000 bail. Wilson Juarez was not accused of attacking the officers directly, but instead with tampering with evidence that might get his fellow defendants in trouble with the law. He'd also been picked up by ICE on Friday. To keep him in city custody and not federal, the judge gave him $1 cash bail. She gave a lot more to Darwin Gomez Isquiel, in addition to being accused of attacking the cops, he's also charged with being a lookout in a theft at Macy's in Queens. He got $50,000 bail. The largest police union says it's about time. They should have never been released. These individuals are all behind bars where they belong. A total of eight men are suspected in this attack. Two of them went before a judge earlier this week. Only one has yet to be arraigned. His name is Joanne Bowada. The five who were before a judge today are all having to come back in April. Reporting from Lower Manhattan outside of court, I'm James Ford, PIX11 News. What do you guys think about that? A dollar bail for the one guy. So there has been a report put out and this report highlights what an ICE director said about the migrant, quote unquote, migrant crisis in New York City. All right. Now, let me ask you guys this question. Do you all feel that the migrant quote unquote crisis will lead inevitably to a imported crime wave if we can't say that it's done that already? If you guys think that that will happen or is happening, give me a thumbs up. If you guys think that that won't happen or is not happening, give me a thumbs down. 833 everyone in state lawmakers pushing a bill that would force local law enforcement agencies to report to federal authorities every time that a migrant is arrested. Now, mind you, remember, they don't keep crime statistics on migrants. They do not record crime statistics on migrants. Now, here's the question, right? They could have done. There should always be coordination to get dangerous criminals away from the public. Would you guys agree? Why has it taken them so long to do this? 833 everyone in state lawmakers 
pushing a bill that would force local law enforcement agencies to report to federal authorities every time that a migrant is arrested. Now, this in response to the recent wave of crimes involving asylum seekers. So joining us this morning is the head of the New York Office for U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement, or ICE, Director Ken Janela. So good morning to you, Ken. Thanks for being with us. Outstanding. Good morning. Thank you for having me. All right, so let's talk about the... Let me ask you guys this question. Is this proof that these people live in their own reality, that these people make up rules as they go and that they can't be trusted for anything if this is proof of that give me a thumbs up if it's not proof of that give me a thumbs down how are you how can they lit this is a sanctuary city but they're breaking the rules of the sanctuary city using signatures shout out to bb rodriguez and shout out to vega what's good with y'all make it make sense make it make sense <clears throat> Does any of this make sense? Now, here's the question. If New York can do this, why can't Chicago do it? We've been said that they could do, do something like this. So why now? The latest. Uh, so the federal agents that arrested a 19 year old for allegedly stealing at the Queen Center Mall. And we were all surprised to find out that he is also allegedly involved with that uh, with that attack on the NYPD officer. So what's the latest on that? I mean, is he now being held without bail? Well, I mean, right now, ongoing operations, current operations, I, you know, I usually don't speak about them um, mm -hmm. while we're still dealing with certain individuals. So all I can let you know is that uh, ICE, the women and men of ICE are out in the uh, community every day looking for public safety threats, uh, criminal non-citizens. It's the, a job, it's a mission that's very important. And I love to come on and educate people so they realize how important the work that uh, ICRO in New York and across the country does. So are, are you in favor of, I, when, you, when you hear that a migrant or a Tom Seeker has committed a crime or allegedly committed a crime, right? In deporting them back to where they came from rather than letting the criminal system, justice system play out here? Well. I mean, as far as my opinion, I'm going to give you basically what ICE ERO uh, wants to be done. And okay. We love to see the cases go to completion yeah. for local mm -hmm. judges because that's the justice system. But ERO, it doesn't matter if the subject has What's a ERO. It's enforcement removal operations. Okay. Um, and we don't. it doesn't matter if the individual has a conviction or just even arrest for a significant crime. Um, we can take those individuals into custody and they'd be placed into removal proceedings. Every non-citizen is afforded the right to an attorney. Every non-citizen is afforded a right to a trial. So what we would like to see in ERO um, New York City and obviously across the country is that when they have these so-called sanctuary policies, we would just love for you know the mayor's office, the governor's office, just to revisit them. Yeah. I mean, we're here to help. We want to help. But when so now here goes my question. This could have always been done. Would you guys agree? Like, there's nothing that changed that made them not be able to do this at the beginning of when all of these things started happening. As soon as they saw that there was an influx of migrants coming in, they should have said, well, one thing that we're going to need to do is be able to e have easy access to manage <clears throat> any potential surges in crime. They chose not to do that. So how is it that just all of a sudden now they're able to do this? Shout out to Sanctuary. Sanctuary says, I'm not trying to support them in jail. Immediate deportation, period. Facts. If you guys agree with the Sanctuary, give me a thumbs up. If you guys disagree with the Sanctuary, give me a thumbs down and let me know why. When the policies go into effect, which they did, you know, 10 years ago and then additional ones about four to eight years ago, um, it basically just stopped all of the cooperation between our law enforcement partners, partners on the city and state levels. Yeah. Can you talk about the coordination then when something like this happens so, between local yeah. authorities and and the ICE? Uh, so unfortunately, I in the press conference I had the other day, I, I had brought this up about, you know, we have databases that let us know when individuals are arrested. Unfortunately, in New York City, there's a hundreds of hundreds of arrests each week. Mm -hmm. So we want to try and go after the most uh, violent crimes, the most heinous individuals. Um, and the ones from the other day that involved the attack on the NYPD officers, we didn't know about it, but we found out it through the media. Wow. And as a law enforcement agency, I mean, we're supposed to be co collaborating with our law enforcement partners and it would be so much easier if we were just contacted or called. I mean, there is these issues that arise here in, in New York about our detainers, ICE detainers, mm -hmm. um, because of the sanctuary policies that have been put in place. Um, uh, NYPD, Rikers Island Department of Corrections does not honor our detainers. And every one of our detainers is uh, accompanied by an administrative warrant. And this is where some of the semantics come into play between state law and federal law. So the state 
uh, entities basically say, well, if you give us a judicial warrant, which is signed by a, a judge, a, a U.S. magistrate or a, a, a criminal judge, yeah. uh, we'll release the individual back into your custody. You know, it sounds messy. It is because we have the authority. We provide them with administrative warrants that are authorized by the INA, which is the Immigration and Nationalization Act, and 8 CFR, which is the Code of Federal Regulations, which grants us the power to issue these detainers and, and this, these yes. warrants. So, but just so I'm clear, right? Because you, you said that you want the criminal justice system to play out fully, which right. means that those arrested for the Times Square system would go to... Real quick, ladies and gentlemen, shout out to CyberDean100. Make sure you guys show him some love. Throw some radiation emoji in the chat for the 1999 Super Chat. Definitely appreciate it. Make sure y'all show him some love. Appreciate you, CyberDean a court Correct. and get heard by the judge and then the system would play out if they're found guilty they would get deported via ice true i right. mean but if they were released we would take them into custody if they were cooperating with us but still let the trial play out uh, it, absolutely because we can work with the local authorities um when we have individuals in our custody they can provide us with writs where they rid them out of our custody and they bring them to so the, the warrants that you held that press conference with you i, I watched it with nicole maliotakis and other republican leaders were calling for these warrants to be issued or given back the power to the city to let you guys have these warrants what's not taking place well but the sanctuary policy is in place. First of all, there's no cooperation, so there's no contact or collaboration between, okay. you know, local law enforcement, NYPD, and, and ICRO. Um, the detainers are not on it. So if someone goes to Rikers, we drop a detainer, we issue an immigration detainer. Um, they're going to release the individual back okay. into the community without contacting us. So then my staff. So do you guys see that? Why is that like that? That shouldn't even be allowed to be like that. So now, after hearing this, I want to ask you guys the question. Whose fault is it that there's this migrant crime wave? Whose fault is it based on what we're hearing here? Did you guys see that? Did you guys see that? And real quick, shout out to Hurricane IQ with the 999 super sticker. Make sure you guys show Hurricane some love. Throw some radiation emoji and some ducks in the chat for Hurricane IQ. Definitely appreciate it, bro, bro. Look at this. There sh people should not be confused as to where all of this funk, all the dysfunction and the breakdown occurs. Shout out to Alanda. What's good with it, Alanda? There shouldn't be any confusion. Like this stuff is very simple to to look at and break down. And people are asking all these questions. Like this is some type of complicated operation. It's not. This is as simple or as difficult as people want to make it. Why would they release criminals back into the community without honoring a detainer? You guys see that when he said that? ICRO, um, the detainers are not on it. So if someone goes to Rikers, we drop a detainer, we issue an immigration detainer. Um, they're going to release the individual back into okay. the community without contacting us. So then my staff have to go out into the community looking for the individual, whether he's still in the same spot, which is doubtful. Um, they move around. They can you know go to different areas. They go out of state. Um, so number one, the uh quickly the quickliness and the timeliness of trying to apprehend mm -hmm. them is gone we're behind the eight ball now because they've been released out into the field so so what would you say needs to be done so that it's a much more efficient process look i mean i i would love to sit down at the table with the uh new york city mayor uh the office city council the governor's office we just want them to revisit the policies okay um so we can take these violent criminals into our custody and they're not out at large in the community and they could go through immigration proceedings at that time and we could still honor the local proceedings if they so wish to have it continued understood all right keep us posted on if those conversations happen right it's a big topic that i don't think mm -hmm. going away anytime soon well